Hey, how's it going, guys? I am on time today. Kind of. Hey, Jess. <laughs> yes, you are on time. We're all on time. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Going good, going good. Just give me a second. I'm going to share out the room. Let me see how I do this. It's Andrew's here. We're going to give it a minute for everybody to show up. Hey, Andrew, how's it going? Good. How are you? What's up, Jess? What's up, everybody? Doing well. Long time. Long time. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, good to see you. Good to so you went from crypto and coffee to espresso hour. All right. I see the pattern. I like it. It's just getting more and more addicting after that. After that's going to be like crypto injections. I'm sorry, coffee injections or something like that. I don't want to disappoint anyone in this room, but I'm actually having a cup of tea. <laughs> if I have coffee now, I wouldn't be able to sleep like in three days. No, I feel you on that. I typically don't drink coffee until like, uh, before like two o'clock after two I don't drink any coffee believe it or not but we'll just give it a minute um, I think we're waiting for one other speaker but it's great to have you guys all here uh, I was actually you um, I'm gonna let you guys like introduce each other because I don't know if all of you guys know each other but what I do know is that all of you guys are very busy so I just spent the last like two hours looking at all your profiles and what everybody's doing and oh my god that it's just overwhelming what everybody is creating and it's just good to see what's up uh fanzo how's it going i don't know it's what going great doing. sorry my the mute button seems to be elon musk <laughs> well, no, everything's going good it's good to have you, but yeah, you guys are, are killing it. Definitely a lot going on. We'll give it a second to see if Nikeshi, um, we'll give her a minute to show up and then yeah, we'll get started. Happy to talk to you guys. Looking forward to this. How you've been? Uh, yeah, same. You, What's up, Andrew? Go ahead. No, I was saying same, same, likewise, for sure. A busy bunch. Val, how are you doing? Thank you so much for co-hosting with me tonight. No, thank you for inviting me. This is so excited. <laughs> I'm super excited. I think it's very valuable what you're doing and very important also, especially now that we have a bunch of things out there and as content creators, people don't necessarily know what to do, or what to start. I am so busy, <laughs> but I am so happy to be here. This is just part of the things I'm doing on a daily basis, like, you know, building my thing. So yeah, I feel really grateful. And I think everyone here is amazing. So I think we're going to have an amazing space. Thank you for having me as your co-host. I'm flattered. <laughs> Thanks for being here. We'll just give it one more minute. Let me message her. I don't want to get started without her, but we'll have, maybe we'll just have her catch up. So yeah, maybe let's start maybe with like some, I know all of you guys, I don't know if all of you guys know each other, but maybe um, start with Val and just give a little overview, like um, where you're creating content, the type of content that you've been creating and how long you've been creating it for. So we can kind of get an idea of what everybody's doing in case everybody doesn't know each other. Yeah, sure. Well, guys, nice to meet you. Thank you for being here. And well, my background, <laughs> uh, I'm a digital marketer. I studied mass communication back in my country. I'm originally from Venezuela and I came to the state two years ago. I'm living right now in New York and I am building my own business, like content creation. I decided that I wanted to be a valuable content creator last year. And there's a difference between just being a content creator and being a value content creator because basically my main point is educating people. I started, I've always been like a lot into tech, but my main purpose with my content at the beginning was not tech or NFTs or art at all. Those are, I've always been very passionate about it. My whole content is mostly to towards mindfulness, consciousness, wellness kind of way. And now I'm mutating and I'm integrating a crypto tech, art, NFTs. And just like I have two lines of content I am preparing everything and yeah, I create content mostly. I'm, I, I'm a podcast host. I started with a podcast two years ago 
and officially open platforms last year. It's just very new to me. But, you know, someone I did a lot of marketing for other people before. And it, it was very it's very interesting, this whole path of going through the way of like creating your things and choosing the right platforms and understand your voice as a content creator. So, yeah, that's my my path right now. I'm creating my digital products and I am integrating technology and uh, yeah, basically I'm integrating technology to create a workflow for me as a content creator that allowed me to be consistent and and create the business I'm trying to build. So yeah, that's my background. Awesome. Awesome, Val. Um, I'm going to go then in alphabetical order. Andrew, go ahead. You're up next. Hey, what's going on? So um, I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much for the invitation. Uh, just as you said, there's a lot going on, right? So uh, I've been podcasting since 2009. Uh, and we crossed over 600 episodes last year. Um, those we actually numbered. So I'm excited about that. Uh, this year, I well, actually last year into this year, I wanted to come out with a book um, about podcasting, about my journey and and my struggles and and how, you know, I came about to to bring this book out. So I'm excited about that. I released that on my birthday, which was January 19th. And, and yeah, I'm just excited about the space. I, I see some familiar faces here. Uh, Val, uh, I've checked out your podcast. I've listened to fans. Of, so I've collaborated with fans on the past uh, and in Catchy as well. So I'm just excited for for this group and just have a great conversation um digital product this is definitely a focus this year uh which is why i wanted to launch the book uh this year on my birthday uh, and even some one of one of art stuff with uh, nft because i'm considering that uh mid-year uh, but i'm excited to be here and thank you so much for the opportunity to be here Thanks for coming. Is it me or is andrew a little bit on fa a fast forward i thought i thought it was me yeah, I think the connection is like so so, like kind of. I, I thought that was his vocoder. He's trying to sound like Daft Punk. That I thought that was the effect it was going for. It's been, it's, it's, it's been happening. All, it. It's been happening all day today on spaces. So I think Andrew just bounce out and come back in. But it's happened in like five or six other spaces that I've been in that one or two people's mics just get auto fast forwarded. Yeah, we were able to understand you, but it was quick. It went by quick. So thanks, Andrew. We'll wait for you to come back. And then Dal, go ahead. You're up. Hey, guys. Uh, Jess, thanks for having me. Uh, who am I? Uh, tough question. I I'm a nerd, right? I'm a tech guy, developer by trade. I got into crypto like four or five years ago. Um, I, I tried a couple of projects, but failed miserably at them. And so... Since I couldn't do, I figured I, maybe I could teach or educate or do a few cool things around the space and add value somehow. So I started a podcast uh, two years ago, my little brother, on NFTs. Uh, we missed that on the, the board ape when they were like maybe $500 each. So uh, we fell again at that. But um, we persevere and uh, learn a lot along the way. Uh, met a lot of cool people along the way. Uh, I was a big fan of crypto and coffee. I will say by Jess and Tammy. And then I want to say maybe six months ago, uh, they gave me the great honor of being co-host on that. And it gave me a lot of ideas. So just recently, I started my own space called Farmer's Market. And it's really just deep dive into the world of Web3 uh, and DeFi. We just host discussion for panelists like builders, gigabrains, thought leaders to come together and uh, answer some questions. Right? Like The idea is that it's very complex. People all over the place in crypto. And if you can condense it somehow, make it a little easier for, for people to understand some complex topic, then it's valuable for everybody. So so that's me in a nutshell. Um, I'm here to to learn, hopefully uh, share a few insights as well. Yeah, that's awesome. I was on your, your Spotify. You're, you're up to like 73 episodes, which is like a huge accomplishment. And then last but not least, we have Fanzo. Fanzo, you're in the hundreds. You were, I think, were you, are you at like 360 something? Did I get that right? Uh, well, so we're, yeah, we're, I'm a, so this latest podcast uh, is, uh, I think 388 came out today, but I did uh, this, you know, this podcast now, you know, I'm the host of NFT 365. Uh, so I did a daily podcast uh, for 365 days on NFTs. Uh, while also buying an NFT uh, every day for that year. So from November 11th of 2021 
uh, to November 11th, 2022, uh, 365 podcast episodes, 365 uh, NFTs bought, uh, mainly just kind of the goal of uh, educating uh, and bringing people along on the journey. Uh, I would never recommend uh, in no matter how, you know, even my worst enemy to ever do a daily podcast. Uh, it was, uh, uh, I am someone that is, uh, I have ADHD and dyslexia and didn't really uh, you know, I preach consistency, but didn't really, uh, you know, believe I could do it myself, but I, uh, kind of put, put the test out there. And then once we got rolling, uh, it kind of just kind of took on a world of its own. Um, it was actually my, uh, eighth podcast, uh, that I started actually started back in 2009, uh, as just as Andrew did. Uh, but my first seven podcasts, probably no one ever heard of because I can pretty much guarantee that because I know what the downloads were look like, but, uh, this last podcast, you know, we, uh, you know, it kind of took off. We had a, a million and a half downloads uh, in the first six months. Uh, and we're in season two now. We do uh, three days a week uh, now with season two. And, you know, my background was uh, I worked in cybersecurity uh, for the Department of Defense here uh, at the Pentagon in Washington, D.C. for a decade uh, and then left there to kind of do the full time keynote speaker and content creator. So I've been a, a creator kind of monetizing my brand uh, for the last little over nine years um, you know, mostly focused on like enterprise technology, uh, you know, not only monetizing through podcasts, but live video content, live video is kind of where uh, a lot of my brand kind of uh, took off. And so, yeah, so now I, you know, I launched uh, a creator coin uh, two years ago. We dropped uh, a couple of different NFTs for not only our podcast, but also for our, our community as well. Uh, and then I didn't think I was doing enough. So seven months ago, I discovered AI art. And now uh, I'm doing a, a new daily challenge where I'm uh, creating an AI art piece uh, every day for a year. Uh, so today is day 47 uh, of that one. So uh, I'm minting them over there on foundation and, and really kind of pushing my uh, my own creativity as an AI artist. But yeah, always happy to share and look forward to you know learning and, and connecting with everybody. That's awesome. Yeah, doing a podcast every day. That, yeah, I looked at your history. I was like, oh my God, that's 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 a lot. I struggle with doing my show once a week. <laughs> and um to do it every day, that's definitely consistency. And and you're doing both uh video and audio. And I kind of wanted to like go around the room like, are you guys just focusing on audio, focusing on video? Like, where do you think it's going? I was actually reading, um, I'll put up the the stats that I found um, as far as podcasting that I think it was 40, 46% of people uh, preferred video versus just audio for the podcast. So it's kind of like split in the middle as to what people want to see. Do they just want to hear audio or do they want to see the video behind it? Um, but before we go around, Matt, what's up? Welcome. What's up, Jess? I'm very much. How's it going? I'm not. I mean, you and I know we, we talk uh, in depth about the podcast uh, situation. Um, it's very impressive to the last speaker to hear you say that you re have recorded a podcast every day because it's hard. Like, it's hard. <laughs> like, I'm barely past, like, 10 episodes. Um, and a lot of that has to do with editing because you make, a ed you make an episode and you got to edit it. So a lot, of the, uh, a lot of the time comes from editing. Um, personally, I think a lot of people consume more audio content because they can go on their jog. They don't have to, like, look, look at their phone. Um, I, think that's where, so I think that's where I've been geared towards, and I feel like it's more easier to record audio than video. Because with video, you can't um, you can't edit as fast as you would with, with audio. But uh, I would encourage anybody who's getting into content creation to just you know do what that last guy is doing. You gotta keep putting content out there. And I'm and I'm speaking to myself too. I'm like pointing the finger at myself. Like you gotta you gotta keep putting content out there. And it's something that, that, that is very time consuming, but it, um it could be very rewarding um, once you you know once you capture the right audience. Um, and yeah, you got to really keep putting content out, but it's easier said than done. So, yeah. I think you make a, a great point and I'll turn this over to Val and then to the rest of the speakers. Like, where do you find the balance between spending time creating content versus post editing and like, or, or should just like right now we're in Twitter spaces. It's live, right? Like I'm not going to do any editing on this. Like, what do you guys think it's it's better? What do you prefer to do? I'm, the editing I feel is important because, like, yeah, this is live, but then I could say something like, 
pee these balloons. You know, now you got to cut, you got to cut that out, <laughs> you know, but, <laughs> oh, <thanks. you> know. <laughs> yeah. but yeah, no, that's where, it, that's where I feel like sometimes it's cool, but sometimes it's not like a lot of it goes to editing because you do want a finished published kind of piece. Like I personally like looking at video podcasts and I like seeing those smooth transitions, those smooth cuts, those intros, those outros, you know, I like seeing stuff like that, but I know that it takes work you know, behind the scenes in, in uh, video editors. Let me go to Val. What do you think? What are your Yeah, thoughts? I was literally going to come something about that because I think in my process, it's been really interesting. I got so frustrated at the beginning <laughs> with the podcast. I was like, maybe I'm not sounding good enough or maybe this is not professional enough. And, you know, when you go through the process of building content, even if you don't think about it, I love I love how you put out yourself out there. It's in the space, the mental space you are right now. So for me now, I am literally enjoying more doing it, even if it's not perfect. Once I was reading this book about content creation and whatever, and this YouTuber said something that stuck in my mind so hard. She said, you know, you have a triangle of things. You can have catchy personality, amazing editing, unvaluable content. And you have to choose two. Because you cannot do the, the, the three at the same time. Because when you start doing this and when you start as a solopreneur and, and you know, as a content creator, you might not have an amazing editing. Uh, but if you can allow yourself to put yourself out there in a very vulnerable and honest way, I think at the end, the community connects with that beginning version of you being a content creator. You know, People like to see that you don't have everything figured out at the beginning. And actually, when you don't have everything figured out, is the way you can actually learn. Because I don't think we have a certain way of doing content, in our, like in the perfect way. We can use technology. And that's one of the things I want to talk along the, 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 this space today. We need to understand what and how can we use the tools that are out there for us to make it easier. But at the end, it's more important for me, for me. And I don't know if you shared these guys, uh, create valuable content and content that people can actually connect with and then having like everything edited perfectly right now. And I think that's, you know, eventually you will start monetizing and then you can hire a video, video, video editor, you know, and make it more professional. But at the beginning it's, it's such a lie that you're gonna do like perfect content <laughs> because you're gonna get you're gonna oh get so God. sad because you're not there, you know it's gonna be so frustrating and that's what happened to me <laughs> it is it is you notice everything too Andrew what are your thoughts what are you focused on more I mean you've been doing this for a hmm. while what what do you focus on more yeah I don't um I don't decide like how the viewer or the listener is going to do what they do I just want to make sure the content is available so whether it's the video stuff or the audio uh, stuff, I want to make sure that it's out since we currently do both uh, for, for our podcast. Uh, but as far as like editing, I think one of the things that really helped out is like once I figured out my voice on a microphone, I edit it less, right? So at this stage in the game for me, because I understand what I'm putting out and the tone that I'm putting it out on, right? Or, or at, if you will, uh, it's so much easier for me to produce a podcast because of the tempo and the tone. And I've been recording with my co-host for a while, so it's easier to speak to her. So those things make it easy. So I'm not really editing as much, right? Unless you want to use like a tool for jump cutting. For the video side of things, there's that. But outside of the conversations that we have on video, we're just having a conversation, right? I'm talking to her or even like Jess, if I was talking to you, we're just having a conversation. And the way we have that conversation is how it's going to be recorded. So I'm not editing as much as I used to. But we're not using, you're not using this mic. Yeah, I would say you're like 80% back, let's say. Maybe it's the connection, Andrew. I don't know if you want to like restart your internet and go back. Maybe you can be writing because of that. Could be. But I, yeah, Twitter spaces, just, that's the thing. It's like, no, no, it's like, it's totally fine. Hit or to refer, I think I caught uh, most of the things you said. Yeah, I heard it. Yeah, same Yeah, thing. I think, um, yes, go look just, sorry. No, I was going to say if Dow or Fanzo wanted to chime in and maybe talk about, like, if you are doing some editing, what, what is everybody using to edit their content? I know, Fanzo, you do a lot of live streams, right? Yeah, you know, I, so it's just such a, you know, I, I liked um, Andrew's point on, you know, allowing the audience to, um, you know, allow them to choose. So I, 
I record video with every podcast episode I've pretty much ever done, uh, other than you know a couple of the episodes uh, in the daily podcast. I I recorded uh, nine episodes from the airport, you know, in between uh, flights in the daily podcast. So I had a mobile recorder, uh, and I actually travel with my uh, with my high LPR. Uh, 40 microphone and actually recorded it in in the airport thank goodness that you know it's a dynamic mic where I could you know kind of drown it out the background but other than that I, I do use video even if I'm not putting the video out like I I, I don't pr- I don't promote the YouTube channel as much as I do the podcast but you know I, I do use it for discovery we do use it for you know uh, upcycling content over to Instagram reels or to TikTok um, so I use video that side but I will say like you know in the editing you know, conversation, you know, and what was said earlier is so spot on, uh, you know, the sacrifice that was had to be made uh, to do the daily podcast is, is honestly why I didn't do daily for season two uh, is just because, you know, it's not only editing, but it's promoting, it's celebrating it. And because I was putting out so much damn content that, you know, by the time I posted one tweet, uh, you know, put a clip on the video on, on LinkedIn uh, for the episode, I was already recording the next day's episode, you know, and putting that out. And so, you know, I think consistency is important. I think, um, you know, figuring out kind of not only your voice, but your style. You know, I have like a this like, you know, sticky note rule that I, I've created a long time ago where, you know, I put my, my questions or my ideas on a sticky note um, underneath the camera and I allow myself the freedom uh, to kind of let myself go down rabbit holes. But the sticky notes have the bullet points that I want to make sure that I, I want to cover. And so for the most part, I, I don't have to do a whole lot of editing uh, post, uh, you know, interview or even post solo solo episode. But I've also done, you know, total you know, between the nine podcasts, you know, I've done well over, you know, 1300 uh, podcast episodes. So it took me, you know, a long while. I'll say I, I, I focus a lot on editing. And, and the thing I always tell people, and I, I even have a sticky note that, you know, like there, you put a clock on your editing and whenever that clock goes off, then that's the time you stop editing. Because I think anyone of us that have you know edited before, you can go down a rabbit hole and, and really focus on editing, like find minute details. But more often than not, they, those things won't stand out too you know too large. So I usually put a clock on and say, okay, I'll edit this for this amount of time. And whenever that clock goes up, uh, I'll try to wrap up where I'm at, rather than sometimes you know spending three hours kind of making sure that I you know fade in, fade out, and everybody's voice is exactly equal. And for the most part, most people you know might not even you know kind of hear that difference. But you know, I think it's it's definitely a balance. And I think if you put more time into the creation, the structure, and your voice, you'll have to spend less time on the editing. But if you want to kind of spend more time on the editing, you don't have to put as much kind of on the front end with the with the voice. So just my take. Great points. Go ahead, Val, and then I'll I'll go to Dow and then Matt. Yeah, I that's so valuable, uh, Hanso, because I think there are two main things I do as a content creator that are important. And I learned something when I study audiovisual arts. I did one year of audiovisual arts, and it was like if you can do everything perfect when you're pre-producing, then you can save time and money post-producing. And I, I apply that every time I do my podcast. Oh, I really take the time to write my articles before I go to one space or when I want to add value because I know it will save time and it will be not a burden. So it's something you need to be sure that if you're if you're creating content, and I don't know if you, if you, if you share this, I was not enjoying it. <laughs> I was like, maybe I don't want to do this because it was too complicated. But you need automation and you need to delegate task eventually because it, if not, it's going to be too much, you know, for me as a content creator, and I'm going to pass after, after I say this, and we're talking about, you know, tools, I will, I will say, and I don't know if you agree with me that as a content creator, you need technology and you need that automate automation process. I, I, I know, and I have a list of things I needed to have in order to start creating content and it's, you know, you need audio and video tools. You need cloud storage. <laughs> you need communication and collaboration tools like Slack, Trello, or whatever to divide tasks. You also need create a creative software um, because everything is about your branding also because you, when you're creating content, maybe at the beginning branding is not that important. But I think especially in tech and crypto and NFTs, it's very important for people to know you because you have like a visual identity. And, you know, it should match in a way. And I think the last thing I will consider 
uh, it's data analysis tools. Like you need to be able to understand your data in order to evolve with your content strategy, because if not, you're going to get stuck and you're going to maybe repeat things. It happened with a YouTube video, YouTube video. You, you know, you do the analysis and you say, oh, maybe this title was not the best. So I'm going to check my, comp- my competitors, data, everything, CEO. So it's important. It's like a whole process. You know, what tools are you using? How are you communicating with your team? How are you creating the workflow and how are you analyzing data? Yeah, that's a great point. Um, I, I agree with Matt to saying editing is hard stuff. Uh, when I first got started, that was the one thing that was like, oh, man, I got to do all this. I did the best part. Like, now I got to do editing. Um, I, I use Final Cut Pro, and I don't even do video. I just do audio. But uh, just to get my mic right, and, and I think value right, like, if you don't get it right before the production, it's just a pain to have to fix the sound at different parts. If you have an interview, you're on different bands, and you have to figure out, like, how to clear the voice of that one person where your voice is still kind of sound raspy. So it, it, it's hard if you have like maybe like an intro or outro, um, it, it can get a bit complicated, right? But after a while, I think, you know, if you use the right tool, then it gets a little easier. And, and I think that question is, 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 is granted, right? Like it would make sense, right? In theory to do a podcast for all media for different type of users, right? Some people like it visual, some people like it audio, but I also think some people are really good at doing, you know, visuals and, and videos. And I'm just not that, you know, that person, right? Like maybe if I had like someone on my team that would do that, maybe I would go in that direction. Because I think there's so many things you can do with videos, right? You must have to have like a vision for what the podcast would look like. Do you want to use visual aids, um, you know, screenshots or things like that, right? Versus I think when it comes to audio, it's, in my opinion, right, it's a bit more intimate. It's almost like having a, a conversation with a friend and, and that attracts a different type of crowd. And that's, that's the type of conversation I had in mind when I was speaking to my podcast, right? And, and actually, I looked it up a little bit, right? Um, there was an election, right, between uh, GFK and uh, what's his name? Nixon, right? And this was around the time where television was starting to get adopted, but most people were still you know, using the radio to get the news. So half of the American population listened to the debate between Nixon and JFK on the radio, and the other half uh, watched it on television. The people that heard it on the radio thought that Nixon sounded like presidential, the father of the nation, the typical, like, you know, father, leader, right? Like, very serious. Well, JFK sounded like he was young and didn't know what to do, didn't know exactly, didn't sound so confident, right? Now, on the other side, people that watched on television they thought that Nixon was sweating. He looked kind of old, outdated, like past his prime. But GFK looked shiny. He looked like a star, like a Hollywood actor, right? And so I think the medium can really change and shape your, your experience, right? So, so I think it makes sense ideally, but I don't think everybody is good at doing both. If you are, great. But uh, I don't think you have to, right? Maybe you're just good at doing visual, maybe you're just good at audio. So it depends on your style and what you want to do with your, your content. Totally agree. Totally agree. Matt, you're back. What's up? Are you getting, were you getting rugged? No, here? you was kicking me out. <laughs> we did not kick you <laughs> out. But nah, um, I, I agree with that with everything that was saying because me, like editing video is hard. So I don't have, a, if you're, if you're doing this by yourself, like I don't have a team, you know what I'm saying? So if I, maybe if I did have a team to just do the editing production for video, I would, but I don't. So I don't. Um, and I feel like I'm, I'm just better at audio. Like uh, three of my podcasts, I can tell you for sure, because Jess was a part of one of them. They start with a conversation. Like we'll, we'll be over the phone having a conversation with a friend. And, oh, I'd be like, oh, you know what? This needs to be an episode. And then I have like an app that records phone calls. You know, of course, with the person's permission, of course. But I have an app that records phone calls. And... What's it called? So everybody. Oh yeah. Knows um, uh, was it? What was the Audius or something like that? Audi. I got. I got to look at the name. I, I forgot. I, I got to go in our DMs. But it's like Audius something. If you go on, if you go basically on call recorder on the app store, you'll see like a bunch of apps that record like over the phone calls. But anyway, you can record that audio over the phone, and it records a conversation. And a lot of like three three of my episodes was was just that, and it was the the conversation flowed naturally. I was just saying, hey, look, forget that you're even on the phone. And that's how I did three of my episodes. And I think one of them 
Oh, actually, two of them were like my my I guess ones that got viewed and listened to the most because there was no script, there was no nothing, and it was just easier to talk to the person like on the phone, like audio wise. And the person as a listener, you know, if you have your phone in a practical sense, if you're driving, you're not. Well, I mean, we look at videos, too. But what I'm saying is if you're driving, you're not looking at it like a full length YouTube interview podcast. You shouldn't because you could crash your car. But what I'm saying is a lot of people jog while listening to Spotify audio podcasts. A lot of people walk while listening to Spotify podcast. And a lot of people have hit me up and say, oh, man, I heard your podcast while I was at work today. It was in my AirPods or blah, 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 blah. You know, they're not watching it while, you know, you basically you don't have to visually be looking at it. So um, and but but that's what I'm good at. I'm just good. I'm, I'm naturally a conversationalist. You know, I'm, I look good, too. I don't mind people looking at me. But <laughs> what I'm saying is like it, it's just easier for me to talk to talk. Yeah, those are great points. And I did start putting up just like some of the tools that I use. All the ones that I put on the top are free. Do you guys have anything that you're using that maybe you want to share with the group? Like, feel free to put it up as far as like um, tools to use. But I'll go to Fanzo and then Val and then I, Hector, I see you came up as well. Yeah, I mean, I think. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. By the way, the, the, the app is called Rev Call Recorder. That's the best one to me. It was called Rev Call Recorder. It, it starts with a prompt saying, hey, this person is going to be recorded, and you could send the audio file anywhere to edit it. It's called Rev Call Recorder. It saves it, sends it to you in an MP3, right? Yep. Dope. Go ahead, Fantos. Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, I think one of the big things that I like to stress with, you know, with anyone that's creating content is, you know, set yourself up for success, right? I think you know, for those that don't know, like the average podcast dies after seven episodes, right? So anyone that's made it over seven episodes, I have kind of a, a thing in my community that we should celebrate the hell out of seven episodes, out of 15 episodes, out of 20 episodes, uh, because, you know, there are, most people are giving up long before, uh, you know, that. And I think part of the problem that people, why people give up is they aren't kind of doing what, what they feel is best, right? So I appreciate, you know, what, uh, Matt, what you were saying on, hey, this is how I feel most comfortable, right? And I think that's one of the things that you have to kind of work through. And like, so for me, having live video and seeing the comments come on the screen actually increases my energy. It, it allows me to kind of feel like I'm dialed in. And I'm already very, you know, passionate and loud and obnoxious like I am right now normally. But the live video kind of adds like a layer of like, um, you get kind of like that instant feedback. So for me, that always, has always worked. But I know for others, that can be overwhelming or that can be just an additional pressure. And so I definitely think that's uh, you know, a big piece of it. Um, and I also think you know, we often over, over click the, the, the geek. Like I think for most people, you know, I, I, I give a talk every, you know, it's the talk I'm most known for. And it's a simple talk. It's called Press the Damn Button. Uh, and it's a, a talk I've given now for about seven years on different stages. And, and the moral of it is like, I have two rules with press the damn button. The first one is that you have to agree and believe that perfection is a fairy tale and that our goal is never to be perfect. Our goal is just to do the best we can do at that moment and not, you know, trying to seek perfection. And then the second rule is always that, you know, that the control is an illusion. And so you can't control what people say. Oftentimes you can't control tech. I mean, I can't believe, you know, Andrew's microphone and, and Twitter spaces is screwing with him there. You know, so there's all these things that kind of go on the outside. So like finding the right tech, right? If you, like I have every video editing software that you, is known to the human beings and I get them almost all for free. But you know what I use most of the time? I use GarageBand and iMovie. And it might be surprising to people, but the reason I do is because I know enough about certain settings and certain things that I need to set up and that it, that it ends up being good enough in some cases for, for what I'm using. And I threw up in the nest um, one of the tools that I swear by, and I, I will promise anyone, um, I have no affiliate with this, this product uh, or service, but um, I, you, I think it's a one-time fee um, that you pay uh, to download the app, but it is the greatest tool software that I've ever used for um, audio editing. Uh, it's called Audiophonic Leveler. Uh, you once you're done with the once you have your audio, you just run it through it. You click the button and literally just say, you know, it'll it'll uh, level the audio. It'll level everybody's mics. It'll remove hum and background noise. Uh, it'll shrink the file size and it'll optimize it for podcast mobile listening. And it does it with one click of the button and it exports it back into an MP4 for you that you can use right then and kind of do it. so like. 
every video, every podcast audio that I do, I run it through that software. And I will tell you, you know, I did a podcast uh, episode literally outside in New York City uh, on those red steps. Anyone's been to Times Square on those red steps? Uh, I was there for NFT NYC, and I recorded a podcast episode standing on those steps. And as anyone can imagine, that is New York City, uh, you know, Times Square. And I ran the podcast uh, audio through this tool with one click of the button, and then I uploaded it to the podcasting app. And everybody was joking because they said, well, crap, now we don't believe that Brian was even actually standing in Times Square recording that podcast because the background audio was pretty much removed uh, there was no beeping. There was no, uh, you know, horns or you know, f you in the background uh, by using one tool. So I, I have no, like I said, no affiliate with it or anything. Uh, but just throwing it out there, it really it simplified the audio, um, you know, editing and audio sizing for me in ways that I like. I, once I found that tool, I swear that I was going to talk about it anytime I could with any other uh, podcaster. So for sure, check it out. Uh, I can't remember their pricing model. I bought it a long time ago, but um, it's definitely, you know, works well on pretty much iPad, you know, iPhones, iPads, um, and well, as well on the computer. Hope that helps. Yeah, great points and great recommendations. I'm, I, I've never heard of that one, so I'm definitely going to check it out. Hector, what's up? Welcome. Surprised to see you here, but welcome. What's up? Uh, yeah, this this is kind of my, my I'm, I've been in this space, like content, for a pretty long time. I don't, I'm not a creator, but I, like I've worked with creators for years. And uh, I think just like two things quickly. Um, Descript is a great tool for people who are not very good at video editing. It's more, of, it's a text-based editor. So if you can edit a Word document, you can edit your your uh, videos. If you should look into that. Um, and the second thing is most of Joe Rogan's content or his views are coming from short form content. So people don't actually sit around and listen for three hours. They listen to 10 minute clips at a time, or I mean 10 second clips, 30 second clips, 60 second clips. And that's how they end up finding your actual podcast and then become a subscriber. So you should, you people who are podcasters, you shouldn't care about like, oh, it's on YouTube and that's where I should be putting my stuff. No, you should be putting your stuff on TikTok, on Instagram. And then end up, they'll end up on YouTube eventually if they really like what you like, I mean, what you are. If not, they're, they're not going to care. They're not going to download a whole. Po- they're not going to listen to a whole podcast about you, right? They want you. You want to hook them in with little tidbits of what were cool about a, a podcast you were in, and then that little tidbit leads them to the become a subscriber. So just, yeah, just some of that. No, I think those are great points, and I did want to bring that up about like recycling co- content on different platforms. And before I go to the hands, I do want to see if Andrew's back. Andrew, are you back with us? Mike, check. Yeah, I think so. Am oh, I back? That's yeah. that's dope. <laughs> that's, that's better. <laughs> no, but I, I think um, Hector makes a great point. Like you know, recycling along a long po- podcast taking out clips using it on tiktok are you doing any recycling of content of different platform on different platforms right now absolutely am i okay can you guys hear me okay yes oh this 100%. is good okay okay cool uh yeah so recycling for sure on ig and tiktok um i use a tool since we did kind of like news and and other stuff so i'll catch up a little bit so uh, there's a tool called stream ladder And what it allows you to do is create vertical videos. Um, There's also, um, I want to cover some news as well, because I think you guys were covering news before. Uh, So YouTube is the most used platform for podcasts. I think you may have covered that already. Uh, They launched a dedicated page in August of last year, right? A dedicated page for podcasts. And even Twitter is considering to become a podcast app. And one of the newest things that you can find on YouTube if you're able to qualify for it, is the ability to create go live together. I think that's what they're calling it. Go live together is a vertical live uh, video. So you can actually cut those up and repurpose it on TikTok and other places. And monetization for shorts on YouTube, that's actually going to happen on February 1st. So so that's some things I just wanted to bring to the table. And as far as like uh, software, I do have a list of software. I'll mention a few because uh, you because uh, we were talking about recording before now club deck is underrated for its audio recording capability so club deck is usually used for clubhouse but if you actually create a room with the actual guests and just a guest you can actually record via uh, club deck obs is another great tool you, you can record audio and video with obs you can live stream with it as well 
and then all yield there, uh, and then we can um, do additional tools. That's great. I just want to add something very quick before I I I let KT KT <laughs> speak. Uh, I would like to say that yeah, it's very important important the fact that you can prepare your content to repurpose. Um, and I was I'm going to read a little bit of uh, some metrics that I found that I think are really important because I think podcast it's literally going to be one of the best things you can do to create content and save time as a content creator especially if you're in this media of like tech crypto uh art everything that is happening right now um i was reading some statistics to say that we have uh, over like 51 million youtube channels and we don't even have quarter of the quantity of podcasts so the opportunity of actually expanding in the podcast industry is huge and it's more like it's it's more possible you being nowadays um, successful in in podcast and podcast content. And with podcast content, I'm saying like short videos about something good you said in the podcast. Because even if we if we check what is happening on TikTok and YouTube Shorts, it's like this fake type of uh, podcast content, which is basically you record yourself backwards when you are doing the the um, the interview or whatever you have like these short um, videos of you talking and you post that and it's fake. You're not necessarily with the host. And that's that's dope. That's the way I, for example, I plan my my interviews because normally I am not sharing like a physical space with the person. And what I tell the person is, can you record yourself with your phone and then send me that as if we were in the same room. And then I just cut that and put it together and edit it. And it looks like I am interviewing the person in real life. And it's a fake thing. I didn't have to move. I didn't have to travel. But, you know, it's also a way of saving time. And I do, I use a lot Descript. It was the first software I've ever used. And it was amazing because when I started using it, it only worked with audio. But the amazing thing is like when you are speaking, it transcribes everything you're saying and you can edit it like in real life <laughs> in that moment. And also they just integrated an AI tool uh, for your voice to edit like some things like um mm, like for example some sounds so i i paint it there and it might it might be great for you to check it but yeah i think definitely it's just like how can you make from an interview from a podcast interview the content that you're going to use in all platforms that's very valuable i think uh i want to listen to kk and then matt you have the microphone hey KT um and then nico hey kt what's up Oh, hey, no, I saw Fanzo in the space. And as he said, I pushed the damn button and here we are. Um, but no, I, uh, I used to do, um, a lot of live videos. I, th <clears throat> I think I've got like 600 up on YouTube from, uh, well, even before COVID. Um, but one thing that I found that nobody's talked about, um, I know that I saw Canva posted up top, but there's another app called Snapseed. <clears throat> it's a Google app. It's free to use. And what it does is it allows you to take pictures with your phone or use any picture on your phone. And it's basically Photoshop light, but it's not light. You can make memes, you can make marketing materials, you can do promo stuff. You can be sitting there shooting a live video, stop, take a picture, throw a caption on it, maybe a couple of other things, throw some uh, filters on it, do some cool stuff with it and throw it up, share it out to social media inside of five minutes. It is easily the simplest, easiest, and most effective way to create static um, assets to promote your podcast, your video, your art, your anything. Uh, it's on the Apple Store, and it's on the uh, it's on Google, um, the Android Store, or whatever you want to call it. It's called Snapseed. It's Google makes it. It's free. Again, I'm not related to it in any way, shape, or form. I've been using it for years. I absolutely love it. So that's something I think everybody who promotes themselves or other people should always have. It's right there on your, because you can have it on your phone. Definitely got to check it out. Thanks for sharing. Nico, what's up? Welcome. Hi. How's everybody doing? Uh, serious question here. Because like when I first started my channel and everything, my biggest struggle was um it's not even about creating content it was editing but it was the hardware and i seriously think one of the biggest mistakes i made was just sticking with pc and not going with mac 
Like, what do you, what are you, your guys' experiences with anybody that ha- that's done like a lot of stuff? Apple or nothing. Oh my God, I'm just going through that moment that I realized that I need to go to Mac. No, <laughs> yeah. so, like but, my PC is like dying, so, dying. I like. I still got a PC myself, so and I rock everything on it. And I'll throw out, you know, like one of the things that, you know, what Apple's value proposition um, is more than anyone other uh, uh, hardware is that, you know, the hardware and software are linked together, right? And it's optimized for creativity. So, you know, Apple is, you know, like I run, I mean, I have three monitors, three cameras and two microphones run off of one Apple, uh, Apple MacBook Pro. Uh, and so like, I mean, the fact that I can tax it that much, I can run you know, Final Cut, um, of course, I can't run like Final Cut Discord uh, and something else because Discord is, for whatever reason, decides to be uh, a, a real drain on the on the resources. But I will also say, you know, I one of my, I think it was my sixth podcast I did um, back in 2019, I recorded and edited everything on my iPad. Um, so I, I, I think that, you know, having software to kind of like to use some of the the more bulkier software um, is a is a good you know solution, but the I will say that the web based solutions um, that exist today, uh, everything from a you know um, Adobe uh, Audio Editor, you know, you know being able to use the web based version, um, you know like there a lot of them now have really um, improved. And actually, I threw one up here in the nest. Uh, and actually, the founder of this tool is down in the audience, uh, Greg. But uh, Zealous is another tool, um, and I think everybody should be using it. Uh, for your Twitter spaces and for your podcast. Um, but what they do is they, they allow you to create audiograms as well as create a kind of a catalog of every Twitter space and every podcast that you did, um, allowing people to go back and share. And what it does that's really nice too is when you can actually have it not only pull a transcript, but you can assign the people's names that were you were interviewing with their Twitter handle. And so if someone wants to share it out, it'll actually tag like the Twitter handle of your, your guests uh, directly for, you know, social content. So zealous.one, um, I believe, you know, right now it, there's, um, you know, it's still a free version out there, but uh, definitely check out zealous is a, is a great tool for anyone that's in the, uh, the audio space, especially, you know, if you want to repurpose Twitter spaces as well, it's definitely one that'll work, but hope that answers on the, on the Apple side. I'm, I'm an Apple fanboy. I mean, my username is iSocialFans, like iPad, iPhone, I, iSocialFans. So I drink the Kool-Aid, um, no. <laughs> but I also know that it's it definitely optimized. No, what? dude, even the, the whole Ophonic thing, you mentioned the whole Ophonic thing as well, right? Um, I might as well just live in Times Square. I'll be honest with you. I, I don't live in the middle of New York City, but like I live in a very, like, there's always an ambulance. I got my own crackhead doorman. He's always yelling at somebody. when, And like you don't hear it from the phone. But on my mic, my microphone picks everything up. And I've never been able to get that noise out. Like, it's the most annoying thing in the world. And I, he would always bomb me. Like, I would have all my subscribers. They're like, what are you, getting arrested in the middle of a video? I'm like, I, like it, would, it would drive me nuts. Um, so let me answer the question with the workflow thing. I think it depends on your workflow. And I, I, I joke about the Apple or die thing. It really depends on your workflow. So I have an iPhone, an iMac, and uh, my MacBook, uh, my Mac, my um, the MacBook Air, the 2022 version. So I like the fact that I can just move things around fluidly. Like if I record, let's say there's an audio clip I record on Rev Recorder, it's an MP3. I can just airdrop that to my MacBook if I'm out and about, right? And if if my MacBook is in charge, I could pick up my workflow on. Um, my iMac if I want to sit down and do it because sometimes I force myself to sit at my iMac because I can't move it um so I would do a lot of the work there but let's say I did need to go somewhere I could just pick up my MacBook and pick up where I left off on my iMac because as long as I'm signing to my iCloud like it, 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 it they all work together very fluidly I can just pick up workflows depending on like where I'm at so that's Great. why I like about it. Andrew what's up go ahead <laughs> Yeah. So as far as like equipment and stuff like that, um, I use PC for most of my, my equipment and what I use, but as a, so for, for one second, as a podcast listener, I don't necessarily care, right. When I'm listening to a podcast, as long as the audio is amazing, right. Is listenable and it's leveled properly as a podcast listener. So I think it only matters when you're on video and you want people to actually see your, your microphone and stuff like that. So I typically don't talk about what I actually have because it really doesn't matter if, if they can hear 
what I'm saying and they understand the conversation, I think that's the ultimate goal. But for, for PC, um, I've had a pretty good run with what I use. So uh, I'm using that for now. Yeah, that, that's great. That's a great point. It's good to see that everybody's kind of split. But yeah, I'm a, I guess I'm an iPhone Maxi, i Maxi or whatever. But yeah, I mean, and then like, how does Twitter spaces come into this? So like, am I looking at myself like I focus on Twitter spaces? Am I putting myself and I'll throw this question over to Dow because you're doing Twitter spaces too. Am I putting myself in a bubble or are we early to Twitter spaces? And how does it differ from podcasting? Like my personal opinion, like having interactive discussions with a bunch of people and you never know who's going to hit the stage. It's hard to like manage versus a planned podcast that you know who your speaker is, you know who, what your topic is going to be. Um, so Dow, you've been doing both. Like what are your thoughts on Twitter spaces versus podcasting? And do you consider being a Twitter spaces host like podcasting? I think I have to commend you for having insane amount of patience because like since I started hosting, I realized like I just want to cut people off like most of the time. I'm like, hey, man, can you like wrap it up real quick, land your plane? But you want to be, you know, polite and you want everybody to have their time. But I think that's my in the background. I'm like, OK, I get your point, but can you move on? And it's just hard to be patient right? to not want to say, hey, man, come on. Like other people want to talk, right? In my format as well, it's like, hey man, come on, other people want to talk. Exactly, man, right? But in my format, right, there's usually like panelists that have been like introduced and announced head of the space, and it means that everybody should have a certain amount of time, right, equal amount of time. And it's just hard because you're passionate about what you're talking about, right? Like even here, like you get so passionate about sharing what you know that you forget that, oh, there's other people that, that, that want to speak, right? So it's natural, but then as a host, you got to figure out, and I don't know how you do it, Jess, but some hosts are just able naturally or maybe through, through experience to, to kind of guide the conversation in a certain direction. So so real quick, to, to finish the compare between podcast and, and Twitter space, I mean, in podcast is more like a conversation. It's really natural because you don't have 10,000 people participating in that conversation, right? It's maybe two, three, four people, but so it's more like a, a bunch of friends talking and so there's more natural pauses. The, the conversation kind of leads itself, right? But I think in, in, in the case of, of a Twitter space, it really depends on the host, on their style, on, on how they got the conversation and how they tell people to land their planes as well. That's really important. Just to clarify, Jess is not a patient host. She will kick people out and she will cut people off. There's some, there's something uh, I want to add to what Dao is saying that I think is really valuable because I don't think you have like standards when you go into Twitter spaces. And in a way, I think it's a really challenge to know where to stop talking, where to let other people talk and where to, you know, cut people off. It's just like, and not being disrespectful. But I think there are two things that are, are important and are different when you're doing a podcast. In a way, I think you have like your structure, right? I do a solo and I will start doing interviews. But if I will have a co-host, I'll make sure that I have like this dynamic with a person that is also co-hosting with me. But here is like sometimes it's so savage. And at the same time, it challenged you to know how to, you know, drive people through that flow to just create that community. At the end, I think that everyone that gets into your space is attached in a way to the style that you have as a, as a, as a speaker, right? Uh, that's why we like certain spaces more than others. And I think we'll just... You can just know that with consistency and time. And you also have to understand what type of people is getting into your spaces. So you can maybe know how to improve. I don't know what you think about this, Jess, but I think that's my experience being co-host or being even speaker in spaces and go with the flow. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Definitely a challenging ba balancing both. I'm going to go to Fanzo and then I know Nikeshi just got here and then we'll go to Nico after Nikeshi. What's up, Fanzo? Go ahead. Yeah, I, mean, I think I love the you know conversation. You know, I've I run a I do two Twitter Spaces uh, a week now for a little over a year, and I I, I loved Clubhouse. Uh, I was all in on Clubhouse for a long while. Actually, that's how I discovered Board Apes. Uh, I was in the Clubhouse room back in April, and Board Ape was minted. Um, but I would just say, like, you know, when we think about it as creators, just to kind of tie this back into like, we have to think about like what our what our goal and our mission is as creators. And I look at Twitter Spaces and all social audio 
as as really just another opportunity to build trust to to connect with new people maybe to reconnect with others you know andrew and i know each other uh for a, a good while but we haven't connected uh in a good while as well um and i think you know when i think about the different you know styles i i really think there's still so much space for innovation in how we do podcast and how we do uh social audio right the the innovation of just you know getting someone on the microphone and interviewing them asking them the same questions they've been asked on every other podcast is really what most podcasts have been you know rinsing and repeating but i do feel like the 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 style the structure the format like you know anyone that's you know seen hot wings right on youtube where you know they interview celebrities while they're eating hot wings and they you know keep uh, eating hotter and hotter wings i mean it's kind of a crazy idea but if you think about it most twitter spaces for the most part are either all panel or all Q&A, or usually, unfortunately, two white guys up there talking because they're ignorant and not, uh, you know, inclusive, and we just have to sit there and be annoyed that that's what the spaces that we are <laughs> stuck in. This is Yeah, just throwing, throwing truth there. Um, but I would just say, like, I, I incorporated a new structure to my Tuesday show. I do a, a superpower hour every Tuesday, and I don't know if anyone's done Twitter chats um, in the past, but... We used to do Twitter chats uh, back 2014 to 2019. Uh, and so I actually post uh, four questions throughout the one hour uh, to the nest uh, and each question I do ahead of time. And so I have guests on the stage with me during the Twitter space, but I also allow people to participate in the audience to answer the questions um, in the chat bubble down below on the right hand side, or if they're on their computer, because we know that if you're on your computer, Twitter hasn't figured out that mobile is important because who knows what that, why Elon hasn't figured that out yet. Um, but I actually pin them to the nest. So people that are listening on their computer where they normally wouldn't be able to interact can actually click on the question and then answer and reply in the tweet. And then I'll just kind of summarize those answers when I'm doing the, the questions um, on stage. So it's just one of the ways that you can kind of really, um, you know, kind of change the different dynamics. And I'll, I'll finish by just saying this, like just, you know, for anyone that, that doesn't know, like, you know, podcasting and NFTs have a lot of overlap. You know, I believe they are both the two, right now, the two hardest mediums to market in the world. Because unfortunately, as much as many of us love podcasts, we love Twitter spaces, their mass majority of the world does not even know that the podcasting app is installed on their phone already for free if you have an Apple phone or it's under Google, you know, Google as well. And the marketing of, of podcasts, I still believe, and this is my ninth one, I've been doing it you know, well over 12 years now, is the hardest medium. And so anytime that you can raise your hand and go up in other spaces, that you can comment um, on people's uh, you know, live streams or reshare even on TikTok, these are all entry points into an audience, much like with NFTs, where we have to kind of go where the audience is and hopefully get them to kind of like either our style, like our, our flow. And like I know I talk fast. I know for, for some people, they don't like me on Twitter spaces. They prefer me on podcasts because they can throttle my, my speed down uh, and they can listen less than uh, you know, full speed, uh, which, hey, which is to each their own. But I just, I just think you know, it's the hardest medium without question, but I also think it's the greatest medium because there is no more medium that is more intimate than audio and that we are in everyone's ear holes and we allow the listener to paint their own picture and come on a journey with us. And so I just want to throw that out there that I think for anyone that's, you know, no matter if you're, I don't care if you call yourself a podcaster, if you're a Twitter space host, or if you call yourself whatever the hell you are, we need more people creating great social audio, great audio content across the board. And kudos to everyone that's willing to, you know, kind of press the damn button and run these rooms or, or even launch their own podcast. Those I are all... as a Twitter podcaster. <laughs> Those are all great points. Yeah. And just really quick, like I recycle my content right now. I'm streaming this live on Twitch. I just open up a Twitter browser. I do have like a background for it and stream it on OBS. So an easy way with a click of a button that I'm sharing this on two platforms at the same time. So like I, to me, it has to be easy for me to like spend time recycling the content on other platforms. But I did want to turn it over to Nakechi. Welcome. I know you got tied up and we did do a little bit of intro at the beginning. So I did want to give you the opportunity just to say hi to everybody and let us know what you got going on. Oh, what's going on, guys? Um, Yeah, so sorry. Um, What's going on, Matt? Um. Uh, it's it's funny every time I come into a space, the first thing I hear is Clubhouse, and I'm I just I don't know I can't get away from the I deleted the oh, app. Clubhouse, and still, OG. I still can't get away from it, man. It's just, <laughs> I've tried to flood that app so many times, Jess. Um, 
Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, my name is Nketchi. I, uh, um, I mean, I've always been bad at intros. Um, I build software uh, and I'm an extremely, I'm an extremely introverted person, but for some reason, you know, I got onto Clubhouse and, uh, you know, it just made sense. And I just started speaking and I just haven't been able to shut up since. And it's, uh, it's turned into like a lot of stuff. And, um, I'm really, really just blessed to also, you know, have like an amazing team that's also come, uh, you know, showed up. Um, I know that we talk about podcasting and it can also often be like an isolating experience. We, we talk about, um, you know, but I'm, I mean, I'm actually a podcaster, like in like retroactively as an, I, I started off just talking and then I was the first person to like on clubhouse. We didn't have replays in the beginning when we started. It was a, it was a, it was an obscure thing. And I don't know, one day I just got up and I was just like, I want to record everything. So, I mean, it's it, a year, like two years later, um, it's resulted in like 1500 hours plus of just evergreen alpha, just education um, of every single, of, of like anything you can think of, we have talked about. And um, uh, what you were talking about, Fonzo, it, it is so important. It's so important for people to understand how important their voice is because it's not just about appearances. I think us as human beings, we've we've never really had the opportunity to separate the voice from the face, you know. Um, but with this, like you get to hear people's intentions. You can actually tell if somebody is is altruistic. You can tell. And, and then on top of that, you know, you as an individual creating um you're able to actually expand on yourself. Uh, I, I was already pretty, uh, a, a pretty corporate, you know, type of person. I, uh, you know, the work that I do, uh, you got to shake hands and you, you, you don't get to bring in your own baggage uh, once you walk in that door, especially if you're a member of C-suite, you know? So it's like, um, being in this space, however, it gives you a different, um, it gives you a different opportunity to kind of blossom in a new way. And, uh, it, it's, it's helped like a lot of skills, like on the day-to-day -day basis. So, um, so like I was saying, I'm really horrible at intro. So I start talking about other people. So just know that everybody up here is extremely legit. And, um, I appreciate you having me, Jess. Um, yeah, I, I follow everybody up here. Don't even follow me. I'm a fo follow everybody <laughs> I else. <laughs> I don't know about you, but like, I've been interviewed by both Matt and Andrew, and it was the most terrifying experience of my life. Like, I'm perfectly fine hosting this Twitter space, but you can even ask them. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to be, I'm so fucking stuttering nervous. and stuff. <laughs> like <laughs> it wasn't even stuttering. I, and I'm going to give you your flowers and catch you. Let me talk about Jess right quick. Oh, man. Me and Jess can talk normal about whatever, but it's like, as soon as, like, we, it's like as soon as she knew we were live, I'm like, I even asked her after the interview, I'm like, why were you talking like that? And she was like, I don't know. I was nervous. I'm like, it's me. But, you know, uh, she was like, next time, just don't even tell me we're live. And I'm like, okay, bet. Like, I feel like that's the only, that's the only way she'll, like, calm down. Um, Nikeshi didn't mention it or didn't talk about it, but I do want to give her her flowers because how she streams content is very creative. Like, she'll stream her morning show live, I think, to the radio, right? Like, uh, or radio or, or uh, live. Yeah, like it's live. like a, yeah, we syndicate over the weekend and then it's like live broadcast during the week. So um, that gets, and, and the re we, we, I mean, honestly, we can record it from anywhere. Um, and this started off as like a book room on Clubhouse and it just turned, it, it evolved into a full on like national radio show. So, and there's, there's a whole community, like, and it's kind of crazy because like the community is called hoodlums and the whole point is that, you know, it's kind of like that Illuminati thing. Like we got cells everywhere, you know, and that's really how we operate now. <laughs> like, um, and, uh, you know, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's the voice, you know, we, we've, uh, we've been able to use this same, uh, this same voice to like topple like regimes that were trying to come into web two. I still remember when Stripe tried to come for us and we completely obliterated them. And it was the power of voice that really started all of this. Um, and, and, and yeah, we just, we just, uh, yeah, now we're just on the radio and, yeah, and it's freaking surreal. I can't believe they let me on the radio. I can't believe that. Straight like, and from, I'm telling straight from you. Twitter spaces on radio. Because yeah, yeah, streams, uh, yeah. Like, streams straight up, straight right, up. Right live. And like, I think that is um, to what Fonzo's point was saying earlier about you can be creative about what you decide to do here and with what you decide to do with content. You can change it into so many ways. You know, like how Just say she's streaming this live to her Twitch and you know, all this can happen at, at, at the push of a button or how you decide to be creative about it. And I think um, that's that's very creative to catch you what she's doing. And, uh, yeah, just keep it pushing. Um, Jess has managed to turn the crypto and podcasting to um, a, a, a conversation medium, um, uh, things that would uh, garner engagement on Twitter. But also, you know, if you want to go back and listen to it just in case you missed it, you see has that available. So I think, uh, yeah.
Yeah, they're, they're still learning. The first 30 minutes to Twitch, they were looking at a blank screen. So I'm still learning. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, once you get the hang of it, there's so many things. No. And there's it's mul- it's a, there's multiple monetization points when it comes to audio. And people don't think about that. You have first the terrestrial, like for example, like us, like we have the terrestrial audio, right? The live radio. There's my, there's sponsors that are there. And then there's the, uh, we also go through syndication over the weekends where um, we choose episodes to repeat just um, in, in different cities, different states, depending depending on where our, our concentration is, um, there's monetization points to there. And then on top of that, we have digital platforms. We have uh, the Daily DJ and there's monetization points there. Um, and we haven't even, and then on top of that, there's the video aspect where uh, we're getting ready to, to launch our 24 hour um, streaming crypto network. There's monetization points there, both on the audio side as we talk in our audio streams, as well as the back end video that's there. You have uh, commercials that run there. So if people really get into um, the concept of how many layers, I mean, one audio, one, one pod, just, just even this, this screen screen recording this and just having the audio there there's so many layers of monetization that you can achieve just with one with one space and it's really just about creativity and also trusting yourself you know so anyway and yeah. shout out to my to my co-host I, I wanna, he- hello nikki nice to meet you hey, <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> i see you and you said something that is so important uh i think two things and before i uh i want to listen to nico and then andrew but the thing that you have to understand this is a business. Uh, when you start doing it, you have to realize that it's literally a process with funnels and from everything you can literally make money if you just see it as a, like the whole picture. I always like to tell people that start, you know, with content creation, whatever they're doing, uh, you ha- you need to have this image of how you're going to do this, your business, your life. Because some people think it's a hobby and it's great if you see it as a hobby, but for some of the people we see this like as a way of living. And I think that's the, the most valuable thing. And that's the sh- mindset shift people should have if they want to do this full time. And the second thing you said uh, that is amazing, and I'll close with it, is like you said, you know, for me, and it's amazing to listen to you saying, you know, I'm an introverted. And you get you give amazing intros, by the way. <laughs> so you're oh not my gosh, that at all. I don't talk in person. That's the <laughs> thing that's crazy. I'm very silent in person. That's what's yeah. But you feel you, you know you feeling that safe space here is so valuable for people that maybe like you. They have so many great ideas in their head, but maybe they're not social comfortable with like sharing. But you have you know you one you make you make money from it, and two you create a safe space where you can show who you are like really without any filters coming from corporate work i also came from corporate corporate work and then just open this space to talk about what you really like and where your baggage is and how you overcome that is a human part of maybe this me this this reality so i think thank you for sharing that i think this that's very valuable when you start creating content uh yes i don't know what if you say something but i would like to listen to nico yeah nico and then andrew has some great info to share as well go ahead nico Jess, you can stream this on multiple, like, um, I forgot what the site is called, but you can do it at the same time on YouTube and Twitch and from OBS as long yeah, as you can stream. Yeah, it's called a Restream and StreamYard. Oh, there you Did go. Yeah. Restream to the top. I don't know if I, yeah, it's, it's on the top. Yeah. Um, restream is another, it, there's a free package. It does show like the Restream logo if you care about that. But Andrew, what's up? You have a cool tool on how to run Twitter spaces from your computer. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so right now I'm running a program called BlueStacks. And BlueStacks allows me to emulate whether it's Instagram or Twitter uh, from my PC. So I'm able to use, you know, my XLR mics and, you know, all the other things that we like to use when it comes to equipment. So that's how I'm running Twitter spaces right now. That's how I listen to Twitter spaces. That's how I engage in, engage in conversation. It's called Blue Stacks. I think the current version is five. Uh, there's a little bit of learning curve to install it, but once you get it installed for your, your system, it is a great tool to emulate Twitter and all its features. I yield on that. Great point. And I have a question for you, but I'm going to go to Fanzo really quick. Go ahead, Fanzo. No, I, I love that you brought that up on like the, the emulators. Uh, and it's something I think that was said, um, and I, you know, I really loved... Uh, you know, Nikeshi, your your take on um, you know, I, I I think we we it's not about repurposing, right? It's about upcycling, or or how do we take you know our content and get it in front of more people and be creative with the formats, the uh, the structure, the ideas. And so one thing that you know that has really you know helped me uh, in kind of like the the bigger picture piece of this as well 
is like also just recognizing that like, you know, there's platforms where people aren't paying as much attention uh, to podcasts, but there's also people that are there, right? So I'm a big, uh, I post on LinkedIn a couple of times a week, every week since 2014. Um, I, I actually get a lot of my leads for speaking as well as sponsorship uh, through my content actually on LinkedIn, surprisingly enough, uh, over uh, you know, some of the other, you know, platforms where, you know, if someone sees myself on Instagram, they're like, cool, I love your podcast. And someone sees it on LinkedIn, they're like, cool, how can I sponsor your podcast? And so I think that's a, uh, an important component. And then the other part of it, I think we haven't really tied in um, just the Web3 side of this, but, um, you know, there's some really, you know, I think one of the hardest parts about um, social audio and podcasting as a whole is just like knowing your audience and having a direct rapport with them because most of us are recording and then we're putting it out there and we're like, did anybody listen? Or, you know, we see just random download numbers and, and, and just be, be careful too what the download numbers might tell you, right? Because we did, you know, the daily podcast, right? 365 days. And, you know, as the podcast took off, um, around May and June and July, all of a sudden our numbers started dipping for the first time. And if you were living kind of like in the podcast bubble, you're like, what the hell am I doing wrong? But if you look at it from the holistic uh, time, it was the bear market starting here um, in this space. And so as the market here changed, uh, less people were looking to listen to daily podcasts on NFTs, that's for sure. But you know, in the last 30 days, we've had a 22% increase um, in downloads. And so I think you know, looking at the data, being, at, being willing to add in, you know, context to it, but then also not being afraid to use um, some of these, you know, things like Twitter spaces or, or or things like NFTs to be able to connect directly with your audience, because I think that's how we can take a leg up for those that are still living in Web2 podcast world, where, you know, majority of them just post a link to Twitter and they um, they forget about it. And I really think we can shrink that distance between ourselves and our, our listeners by using things like NFTs and Twitter spaces as well. Yeah, just uh, on the tech side really quick, like I know Clubhouse, uh, I follow a lot of people that like do the back end dev research on the test net. Clubhouse is coming with like NFT token gated uh, club rooms and Instagram is doing um, NFT token gated broadcast. So Twitter is definitely behind like on the tech part when it comes to Web3. But my question to Andrew was, um, Andrew, uh, you recently wrote a book, like I, I, looking at us all here, like I think we're privileged to be able to talk to other people and just like bounce ideas off each other. But for somebody who is like not on Twitter, they just go on Google and be like, how do I start a podcast? Um, and, and you just wrote a book about starting a podcast. Like how was the transition from going to audio to video to writing, like to becoming a writer? Was that something you had planned or did it just happen? Yeah, uh, it was planned, but I didn't realize it was going to happen um, maybe like years later. I always thought about uh, writing a book, especially just to tell my story and, and you know, having trouble speaking English growing up and, and all the things uh, being a one who was born in America, but spent my earlier years in Haiti for schooling and stuff like that. So, so writing the book, and understanding that I wanted to have a document that lived on way after me. I know we could do the podcast thing. And when we, when we hear music and someone transitions, we listen to their stuff like 24 hours and then that's it. And then we move on to the next thing, but there's just something different about, you know, writing a manuscript and leaving it out uh, for, for the world. Right. So uh, the title of the book is just like, who do you think you are? right? Uh, kind of title, right? I, I know everything that I need to know about podcasting. So what do you think you're going to tell me that I don't already know, right? And even the title was uh, intentional. Uh, so it, it is a launch pad to inspire individuals who are coming into the space. And I do believe that there are things in there that will inspire seasoned creators as well. So yeah, it was, it was a transition, but uh, I'm glad I, I did it. I'm glad I went on with it. That's awesome. Go ahead, Nikati. What's up? No, for sure. I love that. I love that. Um, just hearing like, I, you know, the what that sparked in me was like the importance of of understanding just how much even on the written side, you know, um, I think what's really, really important, everything that I approach, I, no matter what the construct is, my brain is is wired for tech and business. I'm I was born in a third world country. That's all we think about is tech and business. OK, how to make money and how to 
make more money. Okay. Um, um, so when I think about these things, like all, all I think to myself is ecosystems and that's what you're describing, Andrew. And I'm sure that you're very well aware of it. It's, it's important that you understand that your voice is needed beyond just what they can hear in that moment. But how, how do they carry you with them afterwards? And I love that statement that you made, like, yeah, we can make these audible. What, what is the legacy? Like I'm getting ready to release my children's series, my children's book series this year. And I, I can't believe like, I can't believe that I'm really about to do that. Uh, we, 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 we are, we've attached the, we, we have an e-com store that's coming out. Um, we have a, a web three vault where all our audio is kept and I'm behind on rent. We have so much audio. I'm literally behind on rendering my own audio, you know, and that is an amazing problem to have. That's an amazing, cause there's some people that are struggling to create um, content, you know, struggling to find that aspect. But the only thing that keeps you don't go through all this work and then not be remembered. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I put so much weight in every single, like if I am Mike, I, I better make impact or I should have just kept myself mic'd, you know? And maybe that's a lot of pressure, but I work better under pressure than I do under approval because I don't trust that my love language is not words of affirmation at all. I'll, I'll be suspicious of you. Um, but I, I think it's really, really important that as we create these things, we make sure that we're always thinking of how can I create an ecosystem? Like, yes, we have the multiple monetization points. Yes, we can do the, you do the video and then you do the typical things. You record yourself on video, you separate the audio. So you can also put that on podcasting and do this and do that. And then you also have the visual, then you put that on YouTube and you do this and that. But how do you create an ecosystem that holds one another up? Monetization points don't work if there's only one pillar. So one thing that I've, I've made sure to do, like one thing that we always work on is making sure that there's multiple pillars so that if one were to become corrupt in any way, there's so many other pillars that we have the grace and the time to fix whatever that corruption is or whatever the source of it is. And, um, you know, even to that point, like it takes a lot of stillness to be able to write. And, and because it's a blessing if you have a team, you have to also be so intentional about how you move. Like I've also had to like let a lot of people go out of our core circle. People that I thought were going to go to this level with us, people that we started off with that I thought were going to, we were all going to see like, you know, twerking hey, on Jesse, a yacht in Dubai together. Coming. You know what I'm we, saying? We got it <laughs> for sure. We got to catch up for sure. We got to catch up. Oh, do we know each other? We, we've connected before? Yeah, I used to be in your rooms and um, on really, house. yeah, crazy, and yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta connect for sure. Yeah, oh, oh, as well. the the reunion here, the power oh, of networking. Can't I get know. rid of clubhouse, man. Can't get rid of <laughs> <Yes>. Just kidding. <laughs> so, like we're both here, like we could talk to each other, bounce ideas off each other, and I totally want to re be respectful of you guys' time because you guys are all busy. Nikesha, you weren't here, but I did my research on all of you guys before and so much content out there from all you guys. So I'm going to, we're going to go till 930, but I had like one last topic. Like is anybody using AI to help with their content creation? And I'll throw it over to Dal first to see, or to get any ideas. Like, and where do you see that going? Like two things really quick. Like there's synthesis, um, synthesis or something like that. You can, Synesthesia. Yeah, that one. You can basically type in some shit, pick a character, and you have a video made with whatever you type in. And then there's a valley that will be able to replicate your voice. That's coming out soon. And you'll be able to type in shit and your voice will come out like Who's using AI? I'll throw it to Dal and then Val. And how is this going to affect us going forward? Man, you guys are out of a job. Forget being content creator, man. It's over. Hey, I got it. No, <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, but I've seen some cool tools. I haven't used them. I keep seeing this promotion on Twitter. Uh, I think it's Blaze AI. And I think what they do is do some kind of automated CRM to organize your tweet and Discord uh, content. Uh, and then I saw a tweet. If I can find it, uh, it was early this morning. It was a studio in Hollywood uh, that was basically like translating a movie and the person is cursing. And then they play another version where they mute her. Then they play another version where instead of cursing, she's kind of using a different wording, right? More, you know, PG-13. And then there's another one where she's basically speaking in Spanish. And her mouth move as if she's really speaking in Spanish. So AI can actually now change how characters in movies and, and other visual content actually speak, right? And that was scary because it looks real. So, uh, but for my personal experience, the only as close I got to AI was actually um, I think it's called Super Space AI, 
And it's a great way to see um, who's influential on different topics in Web3. Uh, I see you, Jazz, David, uh, and Kish. You guys in top 100, so I'm coming for you guys. I'm you like, know, I'm, I'm about to have it out with them, though, Dow. They don't have our, they, there's something else going on over there, man. We're Wait, not are like you tomorrow space. Super spaces? <laughs> super yeah, spaces, yeah. You, you, had, uh, you interviewed them, I think, for one of the oh, yeah, super coffee. spaces. And then the other one, also, I'll pin it up to the top, is spaces dashboard. So, like, now people want to know analytics about your spaces, right? If you reach out to like a sponsor or a brand, like that's a good tool to get analytics as far as your spaces. I'll find those tweets. Um, but yeah, great points. Go ahead, Fanzo. And then Val, I, I know you wanted to chime in on that. And then Slava. Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, we're going to see AI, um, you know, kind of across the board have impact. You know, Jasper AI has been a tool, been around for, uh, a long while that, you know, for me, I, I, I'm ADHD and dyslexia. So, uh, you know, writing, um, writing, reading aren't my, uh, my number one strong suits. Uh, but, it, you know, I, I really have, you know, kind of always kind of loved the AI component. Um, I will say I have been putting um, the transcripts from my podcast. So I, I run the transcripts through, or I run the podcast through uh, a tool like Zealous. Um, and then I can take that transcript and put it in the chat GPT. Uh, and I ask it to summarize it, create a description uh, for the podcast. And, you know, it's a chat you know, platform for chat GPT. I'm sure everyone's heard about it. It's all over everywhere. And 9,000 people are giving uh, advice on how to use it on TikTok these days. Um, but I will say for a podcast perspective, you can work with it and you can say, here's an example of three podcast descriptions that I like. So you just copy the descriptions from you know, podcasters that you like their format and say, hey, can you create a, a, a style guide based on these three uh, podcast descriptions? Then it gives you a style guide. And then you can say, okay, based on that style guide, can you give me a summary for this transcription of this podcast? And it'll actually give you a full description of your uh, podcast uh, to be able to use it on you know, all of the, you kind of optimize on all of the, the channels. So it's for me, it's been, uh, it's been nice to kind of be able to have that rather than uh, you know, I, I don't know about anybody else, but I hate show notes more than editing. I'd rather edit. I'd rather interview. I despise show notes for whatever reason that is. Um, but yeah, chat GPT for doing that from a summarizing, um, of course, um, you know, the Jasper AI has been around for a while. Uh, and then, you know, of course you got throughout, you know, anyone that's trying to do visuals for your content, um, you know, these AI art tools, you know, I'm, I'm now creating my own AI art and it's been a, uh, it's been a fun journey. And so anyone that wants to kind of take the stories that you're telling and get it in a visual form. Uh, I think there's no better time to kind of try these tools out. Like mid journey is my, is my current favorite one uh, to check out as well. These are like, this is like real yeah. alpha that's being dropped here, man. Like this is. <laughs> yeah. Fancy. That's great. <laughs> that's very powerful. I've been experimenting also a little bit with this and more likely having fun I am particularly not scared. I think this is just literally a tool we might use to just leverage the way we are creating content and the way, you know, people is perceiving us. For example, I did some an experiment with my Twitch community, which is very different from my regular content, um, which is more like tag video games, geeky content. And I created this uh, art of myself, but as a fictional character, and I put my voice. So I was like, I was creating a story, like a video game in this, like on Discord with sharing with my community. And it was crazy because I could speak Spanish and English at the same time with this character. And it was just crazy. And also every software that I've been using right now, for example, Descript, I think I've mentioned, um, integrated recently AI. So like I said, you can be literally podcasting and it will edit whatever you're saying and if you just made a mistake it will automatically you know fix it so i think it's very powerful to know that at the end this is just a tool and it's to, i think it will save us money and time and i am the type i'm like nikki in this i say like time is money so the most we can experiment with these tools uh, to you know create that automatization process with everything we're doing i think the best that will be my. I agree. And I'll throw it over to whoever next, but like it still scares me. Like Synthesia, the one that I put up at, about the video, you could actually create. <laughs> yeah, it's a little scary. <laughs> you could create your own custom avatar. You have to do like certain 
photography. So you could create a, a, a avatar of yourself and just type in sh- stuff and have it do videos for you. Like that's kind of creepy if you think about it. And then Valley is going to be the voice version of chat GPT. Um, Nikachi, did you want to chime in? If not, then we'll go to, and we'll go to cuts afterwards. Are you using no, no, no. AI? Um, I mean, I, I, I've been, I mean, I mess around with chat GPT, but more on like the dev stuff. Like I use it to opt like, um, uh, of Eden.io, like our, 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 uh, our, 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 our token, like our, where I store my IP on Clubhouse, it was rampant. My IP, it was known to come and steal my IP. Like it was known on that app that you go and steal stuff from and catch you because, you know, so you can scam people, you know what I mean? So you can sound like you know what you're doing. So um, that that's what birthed that whole um, concept of creating like a vault. So I actually use chat GPT on the dev um, side to kind of, um, I'm always like applying more and more seals to it because the amount of IP I'm getting ready to upload there, I can't take any chances. But um, that that's another thing. Like also how you store your content is really, really, important that's that's what i learned long term and like um people in our community like the, how they utilize it they just use our our our, our nft and but we treat them like i mean i'm a developer so i was never going to be like look at this picture you know it was always going to be what it, what is the we use it as access token so that's the only way to access it so what i use chat gpt for is more like um uh experimenting like i'm experimenting with some soulbound um nfts that also have subscription um aspects so you know, like 10 day subscriptions, 30 day subscriptions, 60 day subscription, 90 day subscriptions. But then I'm also, um, because there's other places that I could go for that, but I'm also doing it in a way where I want it to retract back to the source um, address at the 30 day mark. You know what I'm saying? I don't even, I don't even want to soul bind it to their, to their, um, to their wallet. I want to bring it back to the original wallet so it can be redistributed. Therefore it ends up being a normal site. I believe in normalizing NFTs. I don't believe in NFT drops, although I, I understand why people do them, but I'm, I mean, I, I don't have an NFT community. I have a a, 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 an international DeFi community that that just happened to utilize smart contracts at the same time as NFTs were booming, you know? So um, well, the things I use AI for is more um, optimization, security. And I am getting into, um, I really felt what you were saying, Fenzo. Um, I also have ADHD. And, um, and, and uh, uh, yeah, I've, uh, and it came from uh, an overload of sensory as a kid. But then also in 2019, I got into two, uh, like back to back um accidents that almost took my life like within three months of each other it was insane um and uh the first one resulted in a traumatic brain injury. I proceeded to have like a stutter for about eight months i wouldn 't talk um I would lose my train of thought, so I would try to talk and I would just stop talking and stare off into the either so it was quite traumatic and um and it, it it was bad enough that i didn't even i didn't mean you couldn't even have talked i didn't even know I had seed phrases like it literally took a year and I remember i'll never forget I took a sip of coffee a year later and I sat up and I was like, "Oh my God, where are my wallets and i'll never forget it so that is how much the mind has been affected so I, one of the things that I'm really really excited about is that I really do educate on making people feel empowered um utilizing AI because I remember what it was like trying to get my brain back and you know, I wasn't the person that was going to go ask for help. You know what I mean? Like I really had to go through all of that pain by myself. Like I, I grew, I was public. I had my first book was published when I was 10 years old. I had a book of poems published at the age of 10. So I've been writing my entire life. I grew up like idolizing Lois Lane and Christian Amanpour, you know? So imagine having all of that stripped from you. That's your entire identity. So it's crazy now to have gone through all of that work to like, like rebuild myself and it was actually when I dropped this book uh, last year, how to how to demolish your limiting beliefs and then how to manifest like a god, and those are the books that kind of finally unlock that last that last portion of me because I mean I still deal with some of the effects from it, especially a physical, but um, the mental is I just continue to strive for it, and I just think to myself, man, with ChatGPT, like <laughs> I would have had a friend, you know? There's people that literally they have all of these amazing thoughts locked away in their heads, but they cannot put it into words. I know some of the most amazing writers, but they cannot type to save them life. But they can describe a story to you with a level of detail that you can't imagine. You know, imagine people that don't understand, like they can't go through translation. When you were describing synesthesia, Jess. Um, when I was in my early 20s, my family had like a lot of companies. One of them, um, Nollywood is actually the third um, highest, uh, uh, the third uh, highest uh, movie industry. It goes Hollywood, Bollywood, and then Nollywood. Well, we had um, several studios like across the continent. And um, it's crazy because I'm thinking of like all of the things that were written during that time and how AI would have played such a part in just in cleaning them up. How how synesthesia, like the, the being able to like, actually transcribe all of that audio would have made... <laughs> Like we had to get it, uh, the movies that we would produce, they would have to also be translated into other languages. It was so much trouble 
<laughs> trying to find like translators because you have to make the captions. I mean, now you can just sit there and upload your entire script and it sits there and does the exact same thing. And boom, now you can walk into Netflix with the chest. You know what I'm saying? So it's just um, I think that there's a lot of applications of AI that we're still um, that we still haven't even tapped into. And I'm a cerebral person. So I'm thinking about the concept of stacking AI. It's not about what chat GPT can do. It's not about what word AI can do. It's not about what synesthesia can do. It's what what they can do if you pair them together in a proper um, in a proper form. So I would encourage people to definitely dive in. Don't fight the process, man. They fight. They tried to fight the Internet, man. And I, I still never forget the day a, man, a, a guy looked at me and he was like how do you type so fast and I was like it's probably all the chat rooms this was like early 2000 I've told the story before in one of my my spaces it was like early 2000s and I was like it's probably the chat rooms because you remember back in the OG days if you're typing but listen there was no ats back in the day bro there were 500 people in one room and if you didn't type fast enough you were just never going to see that person ever in your life it, it was a wrap it was a dove <laughs> you know totally. but the whole point was um I remember typing typing in front of him and he was like how did you type so fast and I said it's probably the chat rooms I'm in and I'll never forget that man looked me dead in the eye and he was like what's a chat room and I was like you're done for bro you're done for don't fight the ai wave don't fight the ai wave figure out how to commandeer it so that you can make money from it so that you can secure yourself, secure your children, because either way, your kids are going to need to know that fighting them on video games and all that stuff is not cute anymore. There are kids making $20 an hour playing freaking Roblox and you're sitting there yelling at your kid for doing that. My kid better be up delivering them pizzas over, slinging them pizzas on Roblox overnight. They're going to be paying mortgage by the time they're eight years old, you know? So yeah, d definitely dive into AI, but also explore what you can do on the dev side because you don't have to have the skills within yourself. You just have to understand the prompts that you need to give it. So yeah, that's my two cents. Great points. And I know we do have to wrap it up soon. So Andrew, uh, Slava, and Cuds. Andrew, what's up? Hey, uh, yeah, so Blue Willow is the one I've been using for, uh, for generative art. It's, it's pretty dope. A little bit of mid journey as Wait, well. Wait, what is it called? Blue Willow. Willow with W. <laughs> w I L L O W Willow. Like Wally, but with E. Okay. Yeah, uh, it's it's a pretty cool tool, uh, and um, the art is really dope. And there's also different websites you could use to uh, get the prompts. Uh, for that and I could send you some of those in the back channel uh, Jess as well because I don't have them readily available but Blue Willow is really good and one of the things that I like about it is I can do the the generating the imagine prompts in my DMs and not so much in the actual discord right because mid journey gives you the option to uh, to do it in the public and then drop an emoji to send it to your your private messages on Discord, but Blue Willow, Blue Willow, you can actually do it in the DM as if you were talking to uh, Blue Willow in the DMs and you generated there. Uh, so that's been pretty cool. Uh, Chat GPT, of course, uh, that's been uh, a craze ever since late November. I use that to generate uh, prompts uh, for IG captions, uh, YouTube titles, um, tags, a description for YouTube, blog posts, and even ideas for for business and uh, additional uh, monetization uh, stuff as well. So that's been a cool tool. So are you all there? Yeah, I'm totally with Chat GPT for getting ideas on things, not just for like copy pasting it. Um, but Slava, what's going on? You're new up here. Welcome. Thanks, Jess. <clears throat> Lots of familiar faces here. I see Dow Cuds. Great to see you. I. <clears throat> I wanted to qu quickly recap, I've been in the AI space for about a decade, and what I saw last year was essentially kind of the the big sort of onboarding of general mass market onto AI. It started with images. That's where, you know, a lot of the the folks jumped in with Midjourney. It shifted towards open source, that's stable diffusion. But what we saw at the end of last year was kind of um, this newer attention on text. That's where GPT-3 you know, trained with very specific conversational data really took off and people know that as chat GPT. And I think that is where we're going to see more this year. Um, I have seen already really solid um, foundations that have used GPT-3 models behind the scenes to essentially overcome some of the limitations of chat GPT. One example of that is a platform called Perplexity. I believe their domain is perplexity.ai. And what they've done is They've combined kind of the power of 
uh, essentially search, which is the equivalent of Google. Uh, Microsoft has a solution called Bing. They are looking at the search results in real time on Bing. They're passing those search results through GPT-3, which, like I said, is essentially equivalent of ChatGPT, and they are presenting to you in real time what you are not able to achieve with ChatGPT, which is that the accuracy that a lot of people have complained about, you can now overcome with perplexity. So that's a great product that I've used, especially when I'm looking for real time, not <laughs> something bad dating back 2021, and especially when I'm looking at data that must be accurate. Like there is no uh, question and there's no room for inaccuracy. Chat GPT, you know, showed us the, the infinite power of creativity. Um, and yet, you know, <laughs> that came with a downfall of, uh, you know, <laughs> the AI was making up stuff. And, and sometimes these numbers that it would make up, you know, on face value, they would seem uh, quite um, accurate and they were bold, they were assertive, they were, you know, on first glance, what you would expect if an expert told you that piece of content. However, it does have the limitation of making those uh, numbers up. So if you are paying attention, um, you know, keep or keep that in mind. ChatGPT will help you to achieve any kind of creative use case you want. Uh, you know, an obvious example is content generation using text, but it, it does have a limitation of accuracy and, and a great pl platform to check out is Perplexity. All great points. Thank you so much, Slava. Uh, KUD, what's going on? Welcome. Hey, Jess. Uh, yeah, I'd, nice to see you too, Slava, and some familiar faces here uh, on stage and in the audience. Um, to, to that point about uh, accuracy with ChatGPT, everyone should proceed with caution. Um, you know, generate, GPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained uh, Transformer. Um, yeah, generative pre-trained transformer. And what that information is trained on isn't always the most accurate. And so we're used to like doing these Google searches and trusting that it's verifiable information, but that's not always the case. So um, whilst it's good for idea gen and maybe some creative endeavors, it doesn't have the accuracy that um, we're used to with like Google or like Wikipedia when it comes to search. That said, um, also uh, get you like, uh, love how vulnerable you are and your journey and story is powerful. Um, and I think that's a big part to consider when we think about AI is AI isn't sentient. It lacks emotion. So, you know, we still need creative folks to be able to prompt AIs and uh, interface with these platforms. And I think pr prompt has come up a few times, but like prompt engineering and being a prompt engineer, I think is going to be a new skill that is critical to interface with like AI platforms and to and get you's point about like even typing fast in chat rooms. It's the new digital literacy. Right, and, and my biggest concern actually is as us early adopters and movers in the space become more digitally literate in these new skills and platforms, um, we're only furthering like this gap uh, in terms of skills and that can create major economic disparity. So I hope that there's more digital literacy, that there's more people that pay attention and they don't try to fight the system, but they try to embrace it um, because it'll have economic impact down the line. Um, but great topics and great space. So thank you for hosting Jess. Yeah, thanks for coming up. And that's a great point because I think ChatGPT, I don't know if you guys saw, there's going to be like a paid subscription plan now coming out soon. So we'll see how that plays out. But you guys are all very busy. I do want to be respectful of your time. So I just wanted you guys, um, let's see, let's go to NFT uh, crypto. And then I just let up one other person. If you guys do have to jump off, I totally understand. I don't want to keep you guys, but the people keep requesting. They want to hear from you. NFT crypto, what's up? Hey, what's up? Yeah, thank you for letting me up. Um, so I love this conversation about ChatGPT. Um, I've been in NFTs for like two years now. And as soon as I seen that on someone's um social it was a, a girl who was told us a little bit about it so i went and checked it out and um and i asked it mad questions i asked it hundreds and hundreds of questions and just like that last guy i was talking about the prompts um i learned very early on that it is very repetitive so you're gonna have to change a lot of a lot of things um like I, I was asking it to make me stories and it gave me a bunch of stories that were only like three or four paragraphs long. 
So I was like, you know what? I need something a little bit longer than that. Um, and I asked, I was like, let's write a, a novel chapter by chapter. And its response was, okay, let's do it. So I typed chapter one, colon, and I gave it a topic. And not only did it give me a chapter, but it gave me the title to that chapter. Um, and really the only thing I had to do was change the last um, paragraph because after like the second or third paragraph, it tries to end the story. But if you just say, simply type, keep going, or you type chapter colon, and I'll give it another topic, it'll, uh, it'll help you do an entire story. And um, it gives you a really strong baseline for a storyline, which I use that. Um, I'm a video editor, so I made the first um, narrated audiobook, and I actually used three forms of AI. I used Midjourney until that didn't allow me to use it for free anymore, which I, because of that, I found another free one. Um, I think it's called Blue Willow or something like that. It's um, also yeah, just... Yeah, I think for... that's the one, Andrew, you were saying, right? Blue Willow? Yeah, that's the one. It's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely not as good as Mid Journey, in my opinion, but for free, I mean, you really can't complain. But um, And then I used an AI voice from um, Create Studio Pro. So I had to type everything that ChatGPT gave me into Create Studio Pro and make a, an automated voice. But I made a pretty cool NFT that I'm selling tomorrow. Or, no, not tomorrow. Tomorrow's today's NFT. Um, Friday. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's the first like real audio book. All right, NFT for Joe. This is definitely not the space to um, talk about specific projects, but I'll let you land your plane. All right, thank you. So to land the plane, um, I'm a video editor, and I ran out of ideas. You know what I mean? There's only so much I could do that I can't do myself, but with AI and many forms, I could do everything myself. So. That's what's really unique about this last NFT. Awesome. Um, and Marianne and then Nikechi. Welcome, Marianne. Hello, Jess. How are you doing? This is the first doing well. This is the first time I hop onto your space. It's actually 4 40 a.m. right here. Um, so uh, first of all, nice BFP. I, I did you do you actually host spaces at other timings? So it is like more likely for me to join them, or is it just that time usually? <laughs> um, Fridays at 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, so I do host like morning spaces on the East Coast. Yeah, okay. but those are more like crypto related. But yeah, definitely check it out. Would love to have you on there. Okay, amazing. Um, I, I I actually love this uh, this topic when it comes to Chat GPT. You know, all my spaces I've had like four to six hours talks about chat gpt a lot of different a lot of different opinions but the thing that i grasped grasped the most about this thing when it comes to when i spoke with people and when i just dis discovered it myself is that first of all there will be bad actors and good actors when it comes to this tool there will be there will be people who will not accept it and people who will accept it but guess what it is it is there and it's going to be there. It's going to stay there. So you whether take advantage of it and know how to use it and learn how to use it the right way and use it as a personal assistant to you and make your days more productive, more if You know, Notion are setting up their, their new AI that is going to be specifically for Notion as a 100% personal assistant for people to be able to uh, set up their days and become more productive, more effective, um, so with everything that's going on, there are bad actors, any movement, bad actors, good actors, any organization, bad actors, good actors, extremists, not extremists. So learn how to use it the right way, know how to take advantage of this, to leverage it to become a better version of yourself when it comes to your business, uh, to your business ideas, business works, learn how to prompt the right way and, it is going to be an amazing. I'm telling you, I've been I've been trying to use it for a lot of things. I've been experimenting. I've been talking to a lot of people. It is going to be a really, really, really big thing, especially ChatGPT. You know, I've tried AIs where, like, you know, if you want to create a tutorial, you just click on record. 
you do whatever you want to do and it creates a step-by-step tutorial with the screenshots with an arrow uh, an arrow pointing to where you clicked and stuff like that and you can edit it like literally it tries to do an article and you can edit what is it called Mary oh my god give me a sec it is it is a Chrome extension uh, I need it a- yeah check if you find it pin it to to the space yeah I was talking uh, about Valley uh, the voice software earlier it's like Pretty soon, I'm not even going to have to host Twitter spaces. Like, I'll just have my AI. No, voice. don't say that, Jess. <laughs> you guys will never know. I'll just have it talk about coffee. Go ahead, Nakeshi. And then we um, we do got to wrap it up. I know we're way over time. Go ahead. No, absolutely. Just real quick. Um, I just wanted to add two points um, to NFT crypto um, and and. and uh, crypto um and and others and and shout out marianne man i uh, i think we've had like one conversation but uh i remember when you started kind of like i started seeing your spaces pop up in the in the hall and it's super early my time but i try to hop in before my space but that's usually our pre-show time but i just want to say like um i'm really really I, I don't know if this sounds weird but i'm really proud of you man like you're you're hustling and your energy like you're really doing like you're really doing good bro like i don't know if anybody else is encouraging you but i just want to give you that compliment like you're doing you're doing really Thank good you, just girl. just you're doing awesome babe no joke no joke like i just smile every time i see you because like you just you're you're fucking doing it man man i haven't been able to curse all day it's wonderful ah fuck okay um sorry we can't curse on my show so i just need to get that out (laughs) i just say it once um and then just real quick too um to nft crypto um you know uh i I liked that you said that it it built it helped you with a good foundation you know like you're out of thoughts and stuff like that but also be very very careful um the the spaces that we host we uh we do like a we do like a newsroom like we really and we, we investigate stuff like you know we keep it light and we crack jokes but we really do be cracking people's heads like we destroy entire like it's actually really we're actually quite savage you know and uh one of the stories that we are we're unraveling uh that we unraveled some time ago was um the advent of a person that utilized um, uh, AI to create and they were unable to copyright any of that. So after all of that work, they were, uh, we were, we're already seeing the precedent of copyrights being rejected if you use um, AI and, and and we're also investigating, there's AI that's popping up that's being used to test if the content you create was made by AI, you understand? Um, and it's about the rhythm and the patterns that are not necessarily natural. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot, there's a lot more that we express in our words than we realize. Um, there's a lot more that we, uh, uh, intimate based on the word usage i mean that's why they're synonyms right but based on the way that you express it can can literally detect whether it was a human being or an ai and they're us- they're literally using ai to snitch out other ai so that's a whole other war that's about to happen we're about to just be collateral damage on that but listen um just just to add that and then to the to the point on super spaces like i know you know everything that's in this space that um, that comes from web3 doesn't necessarily um do the best by web3 and i just want to introduce this like i recently i'm actually about to send them a cease and desist um they've got my content on there they've got my audio the spaces that i that that me and my crew we work our asses off to research and and we work our behind like 24 hours a day we're constantly mining we're, we're finding all of the stuff because we're like the our show is basically it's supposed to be the good morning america of web3 even our name is trademarked do you understand these people just started up august 2022 they have no stake in this space and they have us they want us to compete against one another and that is the last thing that we need the fact that my audio is on there my audio guys my trademarked name is on there and they're monetizing that shit. It's evil. You know, I just want to throw that out there and I hate to be so glib about it, but I just feel like if we don't say it, it won't be said, you know? So just also be cognizant of that. Like, like, yeah, it's cool or whatever, but they have our audio on there, bro. And they're paying, they're charging people to get on there. That's literally illegal. So as, as the advent of AI happens, it's also mixing with the time in our culture where people are just bold as shit. Like things that are happening right now, it's, it's boldness. People walk in and there's mass shoot. There's like been like 50 mass shootings, you know? So people are moving with boldness right now. And we have to remember that just cause it's web three doesn't mean you get to violate my rights. You understand? So I just want to, I don't know. I just want to put that out there because we're also starting to see the dark side of AI um, when it, when based on the things that we're researching. So I just want to drop that, that thought, but you know, as you use AI to kind of inspire you and stuff like that, also make sure that your entire work is not invalidated because you lean too much into the AI, allow it to unlock you, not to, not to dictate who you become in the space. So just wanted to add that in. This is an awesome space. Totally agree. And to wrap it up, I'm just going to go around and Nikeshi could go first. Like, let us know what you got going on. Where can we check you out? Oh man, I'm so bad at this. Um, Okay. You can join our discord. If you go to my profile, cryptoworlddiscord.com, like my, 
my co-hosts are like in the audience and they will kill me if I don't do this. Okay. You can, you can, I can see Joe just looking at, I can feel her eyes on me. Um, uh, you can go to, go to my profile. We got a discord, crypto world, discord.com. That's just kind of where we congregate in case of emergency, but we're everywhere. And that's where we kind of give out our marching orders. Um, we've also got a news site. Um, we don't want to just tell you what to think. We also want to, we wanted to create an entire, like, uh, we wanted to create a library so that this is a chronicle of the entire space. So, um, don't, don't be told what to think in this space, go and learn it for yourself. So we've got the dailydgen.io. It's on our, on our profile. And it's been, I mean, there's articles upon art, like everything. You can search SBF if you didn't understand the thing. If you're trying to still understand projects, if you want to know if a project has a history of flooding, you can type in the name of the project and it will pull up the article so that you can make the decision yourself. Um, we've got of Eden.io. I released um, a portion of my collection last year. I'm thinking about releasing another handful. Um, I'm really finicky about who is a member of my who holds my nft so um we will have some that's released like later on this year but that's the only way to access of eden and we've got all our content um being uploaded the next mass upload is going to happen um at the end of february i'm getting i'm like doing my white my white wedding next month like my i'm like getting married like in seven 17 days it's an extremely stressful time i've been married for two years but we got married during the pandemic so we never got the white wedding i'm doing Do horrible have, right now um so, rsvps uh through nfts or not um, I, I, you know, I had to, I had to, I had to stand in the middle and say QR codes. Cause my husband was like, babe, these people don't know what this is. What you mean? What is a meta mask? You know? So I had to just, I had to have mercy on my in-laws, but I also don't, I also don't have to have mercy anyway. But, um, yeah, yeah. So, so I, I don't know. I might mint the opportunity. I don't know. I might mint it, but you know what we actually do? We, uh, whenever we unearth something, all the, all the stuff that we like found that like, got them like all this stuff with nifties and the game of thrones and matrix like those are coming out as nfts like free collectibles just so people have the memory of us just roasting them like <laughs> for the rest of our, their lives and blockchain yeah we know how to be petty on blockchain um and yeah we got other stuff coming out we we also have um official crypto culture.io which is going to be a merch store um if you own the rights to your um nft and listen you have ideas but you don't have the audience i have like we have a stupid amount of people we have thousands of people in our community and they're all looking to support the culture so uh you're welcome to partner with us we'll host all your stuff and you'll just you know get your money and be going you know sign a contract we'll represent your stuff and it's all love like we just want everyone to win there's so much abundance in this space there's so there's enough for all of us like when i, I coming from the corporate world I, I, we needed this, Like this space has brought so much healing. So we just kind of want to spread it around, um, as well. We got some other stuff coming up, but we host our spaces Monday to Thursday, um, at 9 AM EST. Um, so EST ish. Uh, we also have a pre-show that we're getting ready to release like access NFTs too, but that's going to be after the wedding. I'm exhausted. Um, so, so there's that we have pre-shows and post-shows that are kind of like where the, where the, where the sausage is made, if that makes sense. So people have been saying they want to be part of it. So we're going to find a way. Um, but yeah, we just got a bunch of stuff. Listen, you just got to plug in, man. Uh, we release stuff nonstop because we're creators or builders, you know, uh, we've got, it's been really a, an honor to kind of be part of this. Like my community, they always thanked me, but they don't even understand. They probably brought me back from the press and don't even realize it, you know, and we're, we go through life changes together. So it's just, uh, I, I feel really, really blessed to even be in this space. And just, I just have to say, thank you. Like literally since the day I met you, this woman has been nothing but welcoming and supportive and nice. And she had no idea who I was. I could have been like a rando off the street, like a grifter. And she's always been positive, always been supportive. Like, and that's so, that's so, I, I'll never forget it. It's, it's so, it's so important in this space. We got to start meeting in people, uh, each other with love. So yeah, that's all I wanted to add. Thanks for holding space, Jess, as always. I appreciate you guys. Like I learned so much from you guys. Uh, so I appreciate you being here, but I'll turn it over to Andrew. Andrew, what do you have coming out? Where can we check you out? I know you got your book out. Let us yeah. know. Yeah. So, so right now the book is out podcasting what you should know on Amazon, uh, Google play, Kobo, Barnes and Noble press, all the places where you, you get your books, which I'm excited about. Yeah, so this week we're recording episode uh, 635 of our podcast. It's a tech and gaming show. And we'll be talking about uh, the showcase that Xbox did earlier today with Bethesda. Uh, I do have Discord and all those things in my link tree. So everything is there. Uh, definitely check out the Twitter and the link tree. We have all the things there. And Jess, uh, I do agree with and catchy uh, from day one, uh, you and Tammy and Fanzo always always show me love and and definitely want to say val it's a pleasure as well to meet you appreciate it oh no thank you jess you're the best you're the best this heart is for everyone in this room thank you i can't like episode 650 something that's like yeah. insane and congratulations like flowers to you 
alphabetical order, Dal, what's going on? You're, what you got going on? Uh, a few things, but uh, first I wanted to say, uh, I think it was Fanzo who mentioned Zillas that one. Um, it's a great tool. So I, I just set up my profile and it looks really cool. Uh, you can see the people that were participating in your spaces. You can set up your, your custom, uh, customize your profile as well. So uh, it really looks good. So I'm definitely going to deep dive into it. Uh, other than that, what do I have going on? Uh, well, Friday, I'm going to be on Crypto and Coffee with Hemi and Jess. And then every Wednesday, I have a deep dive on, on crypto, uh, usually on DeFi, like a hot topic that's going on in the space. And uh, yeah, I have probably a podcast coming up either this weekend or next week. Uh, it'll be on Leonardo AI. It's a tool to create an in-game asset. So it's kind of like ChatGPT for game developers. So it looks pretty exciting. But uh, yeah, other than that, it was a great conversation. Uh, learned a lot. Took a lot of notes on all those tools. Probably not going to use most of them right away, but uh, it's just a lot of alpha that was dropped. So, and this space is recorded, so I probably might listen again. Always great to have you on. Fanzo, you're up. Yeah, no, uh, great space. I love, I love the conversation. You know, we... You know, I did the daily podcast last year, 365 days, and, and my goal was, you know, with that podcast was to create it uh, very evergreen. Uh, and so we cover, you know, a vast range of topics, including security. You know, I worked a decade uh, in cybersecurity for the Department of Defense. Uh, I know there's been uh, some unfortunate security things that happened in the last 24 hours. It seems like that happens, you know, every week. Um, so, yeah, definitely check out, you know, season one of the podcast. Still, you know, uh, I, I like to tell people, you can go back and listen to episode 30 and it'll still have value in it because I, I, I did try uh, purposely when I was creating the content to make it uh, more evergreen than anything else. Uh, season two is going right now. We do three days a week, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday uh, of the podcast. Uh, and I'm, you know, as I said, we are also doing uh, more on AI. Uh, I interviewed for uh, today's episode is actually with uh, the artist behind AI Apes, uh, which is a, a great project. She's not only an AI artist, but she's also an NFT founder. So she has come a really unique uh, perspective that I thought uh, is great. Um, and then, of course, um, you know, for me, the, you know, there's some great events going on. So I don't know if, uh, if everybody's traveling or going to see in person, but, you know, I love meeting creators in person. Uh, you know, I'm speaking at a, a wide range of events coming up over the next, uh, you know, many months, six months. So look forward to, you know, turning hopefully, uh, you know, Twitter space voices and, you know, hugs and, and selfies and, uh, we can take the the creation offline as well. So yeah, thanks for for having me, of course, and uh, I enjoy the space, and I'll stop by more for sure. Last, awesome to have you. Last but not least, Val. <laughs> yeah, I, this always gets me so nervous when you do this. Yes. <laughs> um, how I leave myself out of all these questionings, right? <laughs> Questioning. Yes, that's the name of my podcast, everyone. <laughs> Uh, my podcast is about self-awareness, uh, personal development, and also I'm probably going to open spaces, another podcast to create content related more to tech and uh, content creations and how to use technology to integrate and create your one business model person, which is basically what I'm doing. So yeah, I'm very, it's very recent, but I'm, I'm building a lot of stuff right now. I'm also working in a couple of projects to educate people from Latin America into how to get into crypto and NFT in a more safe way, uh, if that's possible, <laughs> by just educating and, and attracting new, new communities around the world, just like, you know, uh, from other continents that maybe they don't have that much access to information. That content is probably going to be in Spanish and English. So, yeah, I'm working a lot. Uh, my podcast, I do an episode every week and I'm, uh, um, I'm really close to open my YouTube channel. But it's mostly about wellness, mindfulness, and consciousness. And yeah, I'm 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 checking how to integrate everything with tech, crypto, and NFT. That's it. That's awesome. And let me tell you guys, like I had so many other things I wanted to ask, but when you have seven people up here that like to talk, like <laughs> we didn't get through all of it. So it was definitely a, a juggle here. We didn't talk about like sponsorships and things like that, but for next time, but thank you guys for coming. Um, I'm going to change the topics every week. I, I do have some topics, but I'll announce it um, next week and we'll reach out to you guys if I feel it's, you know, if it's something you, you can contribute to, but yeah, thank you guys for coming. 
Have a great night. Make sure to listen back and check out all the pinned tweets, like valuable tools and information to look at. Most of it free. I appreciate everybody for coming and thank you, Val, for co-hosting. Pleasure. Good night, everyone. Great to meet you, Val.